Every year, we just cannot wait to get outside come springtime. You know, we're cooped up inside in Minnesota. It's cold, heavy snow, deep snow, and there's so much we wait for. There's shed antlers out in the woods that we're gonna go find, and so many projects, habitat improvements that we wanna make come springtime, and it's just time we wait for all season. Well, we're out at Cedar Springs today doing a little early shed hunt scout. About 90% of the bucks have shed, so we're gonna give it a try over here on the east side, and then maybe next week come over. There's some 50 degree temps that's warming up. Then we'll head west next week because there's some bucks over that way that are actually still holding. So that's kind of the mission today. We'll check a couple of reveals, scout a little bit, talk strategy, and hopefully find some antlers. Well, this is part of the Minnesota winters and potential predator. Looks like a shed buck, it's still red, right around the bases there. It's all part of the game. It's been very, very cold this year, so it's always a shame to see a deer go in the off season, especially a buck. We'll keep looking. So last season on Whitetails from Scratch, we took two of the top bucks off the property, Skyscraper and Little Splitter. Just couldn't be more happy with how the season turned out. After we took those two bucks, there were still several mature bucks and a lot of younger bucks we were watching on the reveal cell cameras and just keeping an eye on because we were anticipating shed season. This shed season, we're anticipating finding quite a few more antlers because we improved the property several different ways. Bedding, and then most importantly, food. So we had a lot of standing food. Some of it was in preparation for future habitat projects. Others were just, you know, for the wildlife. Leave it out there, standing corn, standing beans, brassica and turnip plots. Just a plethora of food for these deer and turkeys to stick around. And hopefully, you know, the deer will shed their antlers here and we had high anticipation, high hopes that we'd find more antlers than we did the year prior. And heading into the season, you know, we thought if we could break 12, that'd be great. Anything more than that, that's a bonus. Oh, there we go. It's a buck we call seven up. He's a four year old. He's already been chewed up pretty good. He shed early this year, uh, had a bad injury. So he dropped early, but he's still kicking. We still got him on the reveal cameras. His leg fused back up and hopefully he comes back strong next year. But this is the side that will potentially get all goofed up on growth next year with the opposite of the big injury on his front left. Some of the core deer we're really looking for here during shed season would be Curly Fry. He's one of the main bucks that's on the property pretty much the whole season. And he was four and a half this year, clean 10. We passed him up multiple times. Gonna be a great buck in a year or two, and you know I think he shed on the property because as we're watching trail cameras, there's one picture where he only has one side, and then a couple days later he has no sides. Now Peyton is a five and a half year old buck, one of the more upper age class bucks on the property. A really massive, heavy, clean eight with just a little tiny kicker making him a nine. Chris had an encounter with Peyton this year, and he found a shed of his two years ago actually as what we thought a three year old. So. A lot of history with this buck, a lot of reveal cell camera video, and we're hoping to find his antlers out there too. He spends a lot of time in some of our late season corn and bean fields. One other core buck that we had a lot of history with was a buck that one of the neighbors actually named Long John clean 10 pointer. I believe he's three and a half years old 
and you know he just hangs out he actually has a similar pattern to what i believe skyscraper did and he reminds me a lot of skyscraper so if we can find his sheds and see where he beds and kind of put more pieces of the puzzle together it'll be interesting to see if he does follow skyscrapers footsteps and kind of has that same pattern across the property so this is one of the areas actually skyscraper was bedded the night we got him but you can just see some of the hinge cuts when we had AWS Andy Orr come up. They did a bunch of hinge cutting, really optimized this bedding area, this bedding cell they call it. And you can see some of these smaller oaks, kind of gnarly oaks and stuff. Elm hinge cut in here just really thickens it up. You see all the new growth and some of the trees stay alive and keep growing as well. So a bunch of food right in the bedding, side cover, security, just a really great spot. This is the small little micro plot that we got the skyscraper in this year. So up on the skyline there where there's a multi-trunk oak, that's where I was sitting when I shot skyscraper. He walked through here, called him out. He looked over, kind of checked out the water tank we put in. Just kind of worked his way through looking for that doe after I called and gave a 20, 25 yard shot right under this branch here. The first section of the property that we shot on it was Cedar Springs put a lot of effort there. We knew a lot of those deer were shed and actually didn't have much luck. There was still snow on the ground. Figured we'd just try early some of the um, more surrounding exterior bedding areas and didn't have a lot of luck. But as the weeks went on, more snow melted off and then we began to penetrate more of these you know, deep bedding areas in Cedar Springs and started to have some good luck. I mean, one of the key areas that we have actually found most of the sheds this year was between Banana Plot, which is a standing cornfield about one acre and two areas which we call hidden plot and the football field. So those two areas are right next to bedding and they're more of a fall food plot situation. And they all led into that late season standing grain, which was to the north. So, you know, kind of between that whole triangle area of habitat is where I think we found seven or eight of the sheds. So, you know, that's kind of a hot spot in late season. It makes sense. Those bucks are staying close to food. They're going to bed in a pretty consistent pattern. So it's just a matter of gridding that area and we had pretty good success. It's a little place we call Walnut Grove and it's because there's some ridiculous amount of walnut, black walnut in here. And it's an area that goes down and works its way from the pond area and the beans, the food out here. And it's a flat right down by the creek and there's a little food plot down there. It's a transition area, and there's been tons of activity with bucks down there, especially this spring. So we're gonna look in these hillsides and check down on that flat down around the creek, see if we can't pick up a couple of sheds. This is an area not too far off the driveway actually and there's this big kind of hinge cut mess on, on this top ridge where a lot of deer bed behind it and they come out at night hit this kind of a primary scrape this branch is broken by them and there's a big rub over there too so they're just kind of working their way out heading out to the fields at night so maybe a good spot to get a camera this year bingo now here's a nice little nugget Started, already starting to get chewed up a little bit, but that, you know, on this south facing hillside, almost expected to see something like that. Yeah, for a nice little one and a half year old, there we go. He's got himself a little bit of mass, so we'll see what he turns into. Another buck that actually, I was surprised he survived. We had one encounter with him in October. My dad filmed him over on the west side, and he was a three year old buck that we only got on camera one time this year. He had a broken, G2 on his right side, he was a nine point. Don't really have a name for him, but a buck with a lot of potential. And if this buck really likes what he sees when he keeps coming back late season, we put this habitat improvements in, more food, more security, he might become a regular and he could be on the hit list in a few years. Throughout the shed season, we actually found quite a few sheds, but just not a lot of the big bucks we were looking for. But the last day of shed hunting, I went out, you know, one final grid search on an area. We already looked, but there was quite a bit of snow when we looked. And once you know it, Long John match set lane right there. I got a set right here, right on the trail. Looks like Long John, and it is pretty freaking sweet. Here's how they lay. Two right there. There we go, there's one side. 
That makes my day right there. And uh, the other side kind of got chewed up. Good three-year-old buck. A lot of history with this deer over the past couple years, right on this little grassy open knob that we hinge cut. So pretty awesome. We're driving on the trail. What did Avery find? What'd you find? Oh, 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 big one. Look at that. So Avery found her first ever shed antler. And this is a buck that I saw the other day and he still is holding. And when you look at the rack, there's still some blood on there. So he just shed. Avery's first shed antler right in the golf cart trail. Good job. Show us again. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. How many points do you see? One, two. A two pointer. Good job. And a first for me this year was actually finding a hanger. So I was walking around East Cedar Springs and a buck that we didn't really have a name for at the time, a nice clean eight. You know, I look up and there's this antler just hanging out in the trees. Just hit some gold. Check this out. Big time hanger right there. It's one of two bucks, it's either patches or it's a, uh, a different eight pointer, two year old eight pointer that don't really have a name for, but pretty sweet. The way he's hanging here, we'll go check it out. Lodged in there pretty good. And I had my eyes pointing down the whole time. There we go, pull it right out. Well, that's pretty sweet. That's actually a new buck. I don't know if he's two or three. Um, got a lot of late season videos of him. Hopefully he starts to stick around. He didn't even show up till December. And since we didn't have a name for the deer, you know, it's only fitting, we're gonna call him Hanger. Now we could keep looking for antlers, but you know, it really is time to shift gears. We have a lot more important things to do and that's the habitat related business that we need to take care of here. One thing right away, switchgrass. We're gonna put some switchgrass out here. Uh, I got a specialized variety that's actually gonna stand about seven and a half feet tall when it's mature in three years. So I'll show you kind of what one year looks like, two years of growth looks like on a different spot on the property here. And then we'll walk through what potentially three years of growth with this variety is gonna look like in this area. And basically we're gonna broadcast throughout all the beans we had planted west of the pond and east of the pond. Ends up being about five acres total that we planted in preparation for this being switchgrass. And it'll be kind of our way to access some of the more hard to reach spots like IMAX and some of the food plots and standing grain when we're hunting deer. Some potential bedding if we plant it light enough and then just great habitat for a lot of birds and nesting and things like that. It's visible by this back road and hopefully this seven foot tall grass in a few years blocks that. And then we'll do some exterior screening with trees and uh, Egyptian and miscanthus and things like that too. So kind of multiple layers to this and it will look pretty phenomenal in three years, but we gotta be patient. So we're gonna have to do some spraying applications to keep the weeds down, some mowing, burning in the future. So put in a lot of time, thought, and effort on the front end. It should be low maintenance long-term. So the ground is prepped. We don't need to till it or anything. There's a lot of bare dirt exposed and this is the perfect time to frost seed. So we still have a lot of thawing and freezing that happens so that contraction, expansion, seeds can drop in those cracks and basically plant themselves. Another thing with the switchgrass, there's a process called cold stratification where these cold temperatures, these freezing along with a lot of moisture actually breaks down the exterior of the seed and allows it to germinate. So this type of seed needs that process more than others. So getting this down early and letting mother nature take care of it, that's the plan. The big reason we chose switchgrass as just a single variety instead of a blend is because switchgrass stands up really well in the winter, especially up here in Minnesota, heavy snows, ice, a lot of rain. Throughout the winter, a lot of those other grasses break and fall flat. Switchgrass, specifically a couple of varieties, 
that are well known, like Cave and Rock or a new one that we're testing out this year. You know, that's the reason we're choosing these. We want this to stand up year round and provide cover. Starting the Onyx Tracker app. So I can see where I'm broadcasting the seed and where I'm missing spots. So I'll try to follow my footsteps and do some strategy to it, but this will help me at least see if I miss anything big. So this is switchgrass year two. It's a cave and rock variety. And we did the exact same thing on whitetail from scratch you saw it. We frost seeded this, prepped the soil, and this is year two. So after you know a couple years of maintaining it, keeping all the weeds out, um, spraying it a few times, now we're at a really good stand of switch. And I think next year we'll probably gain another foot because this soil is incredible down here in this bottom black dirt. And year three is, is the year that it leaps so year two creep year three leap pretty awesome stuff made it through the whole winter didn't even fall over so real real strong stock so switchgrass has been planted and now turkey season is fast approaching and one cool thing is all this habitat work we've been doing we're seeing a lot of turkeys and it's in the form of jakes which is last year's hatch and i think a lot of these improvements we're making are really putting out some good nesting areas and we're just excited for the future of turkey hunting as well. And then we're gonna roll right into one of the other weaknesses on the property and that's bedding specifically on the west side of the property. That area is wide open, mature timber. And this fall, if we ever did walk through the woods, we saw deer running away two, 300 yards away. So not an ideal situation. We need to take some trees out, let some sun penetrate that area and really thicken it up because it was extremely hard to hunt this year. Along with logging, those two things are gonna be huge in the future for really improving that section of the property. And adding trail systems to the property is really gonna be a game changer this year. We're starting to figure out the hunting strategy part. Now that continuously changes as we make habitat improvements, but having that trail system, ways to get in and out, more efficient hunting methods um, and strategies, it's gonna be huge. Spring is the perfect time to make these changes on the property to prepare for the fall. Create your luck now, don't create it in the fall.